this concert this evening. And uh, without wasting any time, I'd like to introduce Rob Maurer, who is going to introduce the players. Well, welcome to uh, tonight's performance by the I-90 Collective, uh, presented by Baroque Music Montana. Uh, I'm a member of the board, and that's why they asked me to say some welcoming remarks, and I'm happy to do that, of course. So Baroque Music Montana is a nonprofit organization dedicated to taking Baroque music out into the community and out into the greater mountain region. So that includes performances not only here in Bozeman, but in small towns and places off the beaten path around the area. So throughout the year, our musicians include local performers with a passion for Baroque music, and we also have, of course, professional musicians who come from across the country specifically to share with us their devotion uh, for period instruments and interpreting this type of music. And so we're very fortunate, of course, to have them here with us. So tonight's performance actually concludes the 2018-2019 inaugural season of Baroque Music Montana. So we're very uh, pleased about that and glad that you're here to, to be with us. Uh, the musicians tonight actually began their week in Montana with the fourth annual period performance workshop, which was held uh, here in Bozeman last weekend. And about 50 musicians who were students, uh, amateurs, and professional level uh, musicians gathered to uh, learn and get mentorship from these fine musicians. So that's uh, quite a treat for us here to have that kind of opportunity uh, here in Bozeman. So following their service as faculty for the workshop, uh, the group has performed in Helena, Anaconda. Uh, last night they were at the Salmon Arts Council in Idaho. Uh, and then tomorrow they'll be in White Sulphur Springs. So they're, they're getting their, their effort uh, in, in doing all this. So Baroque Music Montana uh, will begin our second season in November. You have some information in your folder about uh, uh, the concert. Uh, it is a very exciting opportunity the complete set of the six Brandenburg concertos will be performed at Hope Lutheran Church on uh, November 16th, and there'll be a preview uh, discussion and, and uh, uh, introductory remarks about that uh, the week before. So I, I hope that you'll mark your calendar and that you'll uh, join us for that uh, very special event. There's a season subscription opportunity available this year, so if you go to Baroque Music Montana, all one word, dot com, you can see the opportunity there to participate in that. Uh, of course, if you would like to join many of us who support Baroque Music Montana, we would be grateful for your donations, and uh, we're also grateful for anyone who might be interested in volunteering to help out uh, organize events and, and deal with some of the uh, behind-the-scenes things that, uh, that we need to do. And uh, it's great because it allows us to share this music at really the highest level uh, available and uh, we, we really like that. So finally, before uh, we begin uh, the performance of the Stradella Incident uh, by the I-90 Collective, I want to thank, uh, again, our hosts, Mike and Sharon Beeler. Yay. We saw Sharon. <laughs> and we very much hope you'll enjoy the performance this evening. Thank you. been in my throat if I had done <laughs> okay. 
was a good right. reminder for the rest of us. Right. <laughs> you meant to do that. Theater. <laughs>
by Broke Music Montana, and we are here this evening with a little bit of an unusual program, featuring the music of a composer, Alessandro Stradella. And this music that we've been playing this week is um, perhaps the first time that this music has, a lot of this music that you'll hear tonight would have been heard um, ever in the Rocky Mountain West. Um, so we've been having a great time discovering this program. Um, but now, brace yourselves for an evening of intrigue, shadows, frenzy, love, death, and mystery. As embodied in our hero, Stradella, a man as distinguished by the prodigality of his life as by the prodigiousness of his talents. Now, last August... Many of you joined us on a thrilling musical journey to Bologna. Mm? Yes. So let us return there for a moment, as it was up from Bologna's fragrant and loamy harmonic soil that Alessandro Stradella first turned his inconveniently handsome face <laughs> to the sun of universal admiration. <laughs> Thank you. 
brief reading from the novel Stradella by F. Marion Crawford, 1909. Our dramatis personae are a Venetian senator. <laughs> His mistress, Hortensia. <laughs> and a composer. Straight out. <laughs> the senator had entered and was ushering in a man Hortensia had never seen. A handsome young man of five and twenty or so, with a thoughtful face and deep-set eyes. His manner was grave. He was very well made, and he moved easily. He bowed very low before Hortensia. <laughs> the senator said, This is the celebrated maestro Alessandro Stradella, by far the greatest musician and composer in Italy, who has very kindly consented to hear you sing and to give you a few lessons if he finds you sufficiently advanced. Hortensia was surprised and anything but displeased, and she showed no emotion. <laughs> the young man before her was the composer of a song she had been studying, and this of itself would have been interesting, even if he had not been such a singularly handsome young man. <laughs> For one instant, Stradella's eyes met the young girl's, and she returned his glance. <laughs> it was enough. They already understood each other. Hortensia could not help seeing that he had remarkably well-turned legs and ankles. <laughs> she felt inclined to raise her eyes to his face again, but resisted the temptation. <laughs> As you've probably figured out, Stradella and Hortensia run off together. And when the senator learns of their subterfuge, he cries, A ah, music master! A singer! A catgut pincher! A venomous <laughs> low lute strummer! No, sir, no! A thousand times no! And he sends assassins after them. And in reality, Stradella did indeed run off with a certain Hortensia, the mistress of a Venetian senator. And thereafter, he did indeed have assassins chasing him for the rest of his life. <laughs> now, the following Sinfonia serves quite well as chase music. Avanti! <laughs>
refuge in a nunnery. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, a convent, the nuns going about their business, keeping canonical hours, tending to roguishly handsome injured composers, <laughs> living the contemplative life with a healthy diet and a well-rehearsed choir. But wait, there's one thing missing from our choir, bass voices. The bassoon, which so ably imitates the bass voice, filled that role in convent choirs. Perhaps the mysterious M.G. who wrote this sonata was a certain sister, Mary Grace.
crime nearly killed in Turin, and the would-be assassins took refuge in the French embassy. Big mistake. <laughs> Duchess Maria Giovanna Battista of Savoy Namur, head of the House of Savoy, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother of kings, the most powerful person in Turin, happened to be a patroness of Stradella. Sympathetic to the young lovers, she was moreover unwilling to abide hit men in her city <laughs> hiding out in her foreign embassies. So there followed what came known as the International Stradella Affair. <laughs> Maria Giovanna had a senator who had hired the assassins in prison, and she wrote to her nephew, King Louis XIV, complaining <laughs> about the misuse of the French embassy. In the end, French and Savoy even used this affair to settle another more secret diplomatic problem of unknown detail. And Stradella's safety was, for the moment, secured. <laughs>
Dr. John Hawkins, commendable biography of Stradella. From this time, finding himself disappointed of his revenge, but not the least abated in his ardor to accomplish it, <laughs> this implacable Venetian, the senator that is, contented himself with setting spies to watch the motions of Stradella. A year was elapsed after the cure of his wounds. No fresh disturbance had been given to him, and he thought himself secure from any further attempts on his life. Maria Giovanna Battiste, the Duchess of Savoy, who was concerned for the happiness of these two persons who had suffered so much and seemed to have been born for each other, joined the hands of Stradella and his beloved Hortensia, and they were married. After the ceremony, Stradella and his wife went to visit the court of Genoa. The assassins, though, having intelligence of their departure, followed them close at their heels. Stradella and his wife reached Genoa, but the morning after their arrival, these three execrable villains rushed into their chamber and stabbed each to the heart.
Verily say you, the course of true love should have run smooth for them, if anyone. But know you not that the gods envy no small happiness of humdrum men? Know you not that the god of war spares the coward and slays the brave? That in the race for fortune, Jove often trips the fastest runners and lets the dull plodder creep past the winning post alone. Know you not that whom the gods love die young? Yet, my friends, it is our Stradella whose name lives on, the vain, immoral, and feckless senator, is a figure of ridicule, satirized in novels and operas, justly defamed in anecdote and history. Meanwhile, we've assembled here and celebrated the work and delighted in the story of one of humanity's great glittering ornaments, and we're all the richer for it. And you, dear friends, through your support of live music, and especially to our hosts, Sharon and Mike Beeler, for providing this beautiful venue, we thank you, thank you all, for coming along on this journey with us tonight. Adieu. <laughs>